Hi everyone, welcome to today's video where we are going to discuss part three of the series, three Excel functions you need to know. I know there is a popular series that's running the five Excel tricks you need to know, but while we were making that content, we realized that we are mixing functions and formulas and tips and tricks in Excel all into one video. And we decided to split that content and specifically create these videos that discuss Excel functions and the functions that you can use in your day-to-day -day life. So I know there are a lot of Excel functions and we will try and cover all of them if we can, uh, but we will appreciate it if you guys comment in the comment section what type of functions you are struggling with and what do you want to learn from this series. So please remember to comment down below on all of your Excel functions that you want to see in the next video. But let's jump right in into the three Excel functions you need to know, part three. So our first function that we are going to discuss today is the sequence function that you can use in Microsoft Excel. So this is an awesome function you can use so that you don't type in repetitive data into your Excel sheets. I mean, for example, you can type in number one, number two, and you can continue this throughout your whole sheet. And this is just the long way to do this. Now, I know you can use autofill as well, but the whole point of this video is to introduce you to this formula that is sequence. So let's show you exactly how this works. So there are a couple of options that you can do when typing this type of sequence that you want to use. So first off, we can type in an equal sign and you can type in sequence. And you can see the formula ask you for the number of rows you want the sequence in. Let's do 20 rows. The next option will be columns. You can expand this into multiple columns if you need to. Uh, but for now, we'll just leave our columns at, zero, at, no, at one. So we're going to use one column for this. And then we are, it's going to ask us our starting number that we want to use. So we for in this instance, we want to use the number one. And you can do steps. You can do steps of two, three. You can do point one. It depends on what type of sequence you want to repeat throughout your spreadsheet. So let's do our step for one. And then I'll show you guys if we want to change that. So once you've typed in all of your data that is required in your formula, you can just hit enter and you'll see the sequence pop up on the side. So this is great. It, I know it doesn't look the same as what we've typed in earlier, but I'll get to that soon enough. So you can see the sequence here. It's got a step of one and let's just to show you guys the step. So let's do a 0 0.1 step. So you guys will see one, 1.1 1 .1, and that continues throughout your sequence. So this is an awesome way that you can use sequence when you need to enter a lot of data and you don't want to use autofill. I know autofill can, if you autofill something, you, there's a flash fill and you can fill in a series and all of that type of stuff. This function works brilliantly and it's quite efficient and fast. So to get back to, I want to type the sequence and I want to have the sequence look something like this. I want the number and I want the actual value for that number alongside it. So to do that, we are simply going to type the equal sign and then in a double quote, you are going to type in your number. I'm going to include a space here so that it, there is a space between our text and our actual value. Then I'm gonna close the double quote and then I'm gonna type in the and sign there and then our formula sequence. So as you guys can see in the formula bar here, this will effectively show us our text and it will include the text into our sequence that we want to use. So I'm just gonna do repeat this process. The rows are gonna be 20. 
<clears throat> the columns I'm going to make one. Our starting value of start at one, and I'm going to leave our step at one as well. So once you've typed in this, you'll see the sequence pop up, and now you have included the text in front of your sequence. And this is the method that you will use if you want to achieve that. So you can change this text to anything. Uh, you can do a bunch of variations with this formula, but this will explain the essence of the formula and how you can use the sequence function in Microsoft Excel in your day to day. Our next function that we are going to discuss is the sum if function in Microsoft Excel. So this is a great formula that you can use when you need to sum certain values. So that is how this formula works. You can sum certain values depending on a specific criteria that you will select in the formula. So this is an awesome way to calculate certain things in, in a huge Excel spreadsheet. So to explain this simpler, um, I know there are a bunch of some formulas in Microsoft Excel that you can use. And if you would like to see a full video on that, please comment down below and we will try and make a video for you on the sum formula and all of the relevant formulas that form part of it. But to explain this formula, it's easier to show you. So our criteria would be, let's say we're going to search for A0 paper and we want to calculate the amount of stock available that we have in this paper. So just going to type in sum if the equal sign and our formula. And from here, our formula will ask us the range that we want to calculate. So our range will be our stock description on this side. That is effectively our paper, our different types of paper that we want to search for. And then we will enter our criteria. So from this description list over here, we will only be looking for our A0 paper. So you can reference back to this section over here, or you can type that in manually and then reference it from there. But to get back to the formula, our range that we want to sum at the end of the day would be our stock available. So I'm just going to select the whole column. You can select either from your, let's just do that, from your range that we have selected here. You can do a specific range. It doesn't need to be your whole spreadsheet and your sum range also the same. It doesn't need to be everything. It can be specific data that you want to calculate from. So once you've typed in everything into your formula bar, you, we can just press enter and you'll see we have calculated all our stock available for this specific paper in our company. And there is the amount that we have. So you can do this for stock. You can do this for brands. Let's do an example to show you the brands. So once again, let's do a brand one, for example, here. We want to, this is our criteria. You can, as I said, you can reference back to these as well. Uh, but you, the best way would be to create a drop down list for this and you can select your brand and your formula will automatically calculate this from your table that you've got in your Excel spreadsheet. But we've got a video on how to include, how to insert drop down lists. If you want to watch that video, I'll put that in the link of the description and you can tap on the right hand corner of your video it will pop up there as well but to get back to this we are looking for a specific brand and from here i will just type in our formula again the equal sign and then sum if so once again it's asking for the range that we want to select from and this would be our brands that we want to look up and then our criteria once again, we can do brand one over here or reference back to our table. Depends on how you want to set up this formula. And then our sum criteria would be our stock availability. And from there, we've entered everything into our formula. And now if I press enter, you'll see everything that we have for brand one. So if I quickly 
select brand one at the bottom of your screen you'll see the sum over here that we've got and it corresponds to our formula that we've used on sum if over here so i hope this tip or this function is of great help to you it can speed up a lot of your work in microsoft excel so our last formula that we are going to discuss in this video today is the days function that you can use in excel so this is a great function uh, it effectively calculates the number of days between two dates and i have included this here as everybody knows is a leap year and we'll show you excel does calculate that extra day that we've got as well so it's simple you, you just type in the equal sign and you type in days and from there you'll for your formula will ask you the end date and we'll select our end date and we'll select our start date and it will calculate the number of days between that those time periods so just to i'm just going to auto fill this down below and you'll see it does it has the start date and the end date and it does include the leap day that we have in this here so this is a great function in excel to calculate the number of days between two dates and just to show you once again it's quite simple we'll select our end date and our starting date and it can calculate whatever number of days you are looking for so this is great for project managers and you have a project timeline and you need to calculate what time has elapsed between those dates and this is awesome an awesome formula that you can use in microsoft excel and i hope all of these functions were helpful today if they were please remember to like the video down below that helps the youtube algorithm get this video to more people out there and please remember to subscribe to our channel so that you do not miss any of our new content that we will be posting thanks for watching guys until next time, cheers.